Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Lost in Space Season 2, Episode 2, it's called Precipice, so full spoilers for the episode, as always. Uh, this kind of completes the two-part opener, I guess you'd say, of the season, where they try to get off this planet, they, they'll end the last episode on the edge of the waterfall with this big, weird trench in the middle of an ocean. On, on a precipice, you might say. On a precipice, yes. I'd already said it though. It was, it was, <laughs> you, you mix and match. You you shake things up a little bit. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was more survival stuff. It was a lot of um, new problems kind of introduced. Some uh, kind of aggressive seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, to put it simply Poison, poisonous kelp yes uh, but we also had the problem of a couple of them falling down the waterfall uh, Penny and Maureen go down uh, and they're fine but there's the concern of A being struck by lightning uh, when everything starts happening because they've got a the, pretty big concern they've got a tight like sort of time frame for it they know it's going to be in about 90 minutes uh, and then the second problem being well we have to have the ship ready to actually try and launch and we have to do all these things and you know, it became this thing where it was, okay, here's a possible solution, here's another possible solution. Uh, okay, this one's not going to quite work, but here's another thing, blah, 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 blah. And it kept kind of progressing. naturally they end up combining a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, they end up using the chariot. They lower the chariot down. It doesn't quite make it all the way, so Penny's earlier line about building some scaffolding out of the, the parts of the, the, you know, the, the sail that fell down with them. Um which at first was ridiculous because it's like 100 foot and she was i mean this will this will get us maybe 30 foot up <laughs> like we're not going to get any further yeah, than that yeah i think that highlighted just how ridiculous the fall was and that they were kind of completely fine well i think the implication yeah even yeah <laughs> well the implication was that they sort of landed in some water there was some water at the edge that they landed in it wasn't like the, the metal however even at 100 foot like uh, yeah Maybe the, the spacesuits may be quite good. The future, future spacesuits. I suits. mean, I, I want to give them that. But, you know, we, we see repeatedly that these spacesuits crack and rip, and that's kind of a whole thing. And they have to, you know, because the, the first thing they do is, right, check your suits. And they happen to be fine this time. But, I don't know. Usually this show has been pretty good at when the danger strikes, I believe, why and why they're safe at the end. You know, they, they come up with a good reason. This felt like, yeah, we're just fine because of reasons. The the water in this planet is not H two O. It is a different chemical structure, and it is therefore softer. Chill, <laughs> chill. That's my answer for you. Soft water. <laughs> Well, so a lot of column A, a lot of column B. Spacesuits withstand a lot, and then the water's softer. You put those two together, they're okay. All right, fine. Easy peasy. Uh, so, I mean, all the survival stuff's for the most part pretty fun. It's just, it is what it is. It's, just, uh, it is yeah. it's close calls. It's just getting in the chariot just in time. The chariot, which, by the way, is completely fried at the end of this episode. Uh, yep. And there's a lot of... You know, you've, you've got John with, with Judy. Oh, Judy's actually uh, not there for she's this crisis. She's doing doctor stuff. Yeah, she's too busy being the doctor to Don, who is dying from the poison of the, uh, of the what do you call it, scalp? Uh, kelp. 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 I've never encountered kelp before. I've never heard of kelp. Pretty sure it's kelp. It's a type of seaweed. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll tell you what for it. Um, I don't think it was funny though, or not even funny, a very intentional kind of bit of writing here that just earlier in the episode, Smith was talking about how much she appreciates seaweed and how seaweed's very useful in lots of different things, you know, toothpaste and shampoo and, you know, all the things that make us nice. And then the seaweed turned out to literally bite someone in the ass. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm seaweed's just, a bitch. So, you know, it, it, it goes with her character that she appreciates the seaweed, but the seaweed in this planet is actually quite dangerous and hostile and, you know, so a little bit of writing there, which is nice, but, uh, and she ends up giving blood to Dawn because he needs blood and she's the one who happens to be a match. Conveniently. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm continuing to enjoy the dynamic of them knowing what she's like and her still trying to kind of pull her shit anyway and how her tactics are changing. She's, she's, yeah. a, she's a very hateable character. And 
you know, Watcher try to essentially blackmail Dawn because, oh, hey, you were technically doing something wrong, you know, before before all this, the disaster struck. And he's like, well, it doesn't matter if you blackmail me. And again, this is, this is an example of her being unsuccessful because she's trying to blackmail him and he's like, what? The family's not going to, you know, back me up in this if I lie for you, so it doesn't matter. Like, do what you're going to do. You, you, you have no power over me. And he just yeah. kind of, you know, leaves it at that. I did like here, because obviously they're both a bit out of it from, you know, the, the blood loss. Mm. Um, and she's just like, it's fine. I don't need all of them. Just one. And he just laughs. He's like, oh, divide and conquer. That's your plan. I'm sure um, that is her plan. I'm sure that's what she's... Well, we, we know exactly that's what her plan is with Penny. But she's, I mean... she's trying her best with Penny to, to do it. And we'll see how successful it is. Uh, I, I, you know what? There was a moment when her and Maureen were down and they have kind of an emotional bit where she kind of brings up that she's the only one. Maureen's the only one who's not read the book uh, mm. of, of, her, of her journal. And Maureen lies. And you know she's lying. And I'm like, oh, why are you lying, Maureen? Don't and, lie. And Penny doesn't as well yeah you're just making it worse and she can she admits it later when they're maybe about to die <laughs> yeah uh as you do uh but you know and she gives her the thing where oh it was your plan for the for the scaffolding uh even though i felt like that was such a simple idea that i didn't necessarily feel like perry should have gotten much credit for it <laughs> no this this feels do you know what's worse is, is is the whole thing is is Penny's like oh you give me all the easy jobs because you know I'm just you know whatever anyone else could do yeah I'm not and a doctor really like, like you know I'm not a doctor like Judy I'm not some little brainy mathematician like well yeah so you just give me the the menial tasks or whatever and this really felt like giving your kid a participation trophy. yeah and that's the thing like she's right but that's the, 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 let's face it most people aren't one of these two things you, you can still be incredibly useful. Um, and that, that's kind of Don's thing here. Is like he's like, hey, no, I I, I just do do what I got to do. Get by, keep my head down till I run in with you bunch of overachievers. I think it was what he called them. Yeah, and if anything, yeah, she could probably just learn like about the ship from Don, and maybe that can be her thing. She can get be useful in those in that way. But yeah, um, as yeah. it is, she's passing him the space wrench. <laughs> she's passing him the space wrench. Um. But you know, it's this is what it is. Anyway, so when they get back in the ship, though, uh, and we forgot to mention this last episode, but it, it's worth mentioning now because they, they set up quite nicely that uh, when Maureen was investigating the egg engine thingamajig, uh, she had like a, a graph reader on it, right? And mm -hmm. it was notably, it really emphasized last episode that there was not a peep out of it, it was just a straight line, and she looked so disappointed. And it's after all the commotion, she notices it's lying on the floor, and she looks at it, and there's just one blip, there's just one sharp blip. And it's like, oh, oh, it did something. Um, yeah. And also find like an arm from like the evil robot. The, the other robot, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, the Saar. And then John's yeah. like, what the hell's a Saar? And every single person in the room says it at the same time. Yeah. Oh, uh, dear. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, we were speculating last episode about the, the, you know, the, the other ship, the big ship, the colony ship. Mm. And about what was the state of it given where the robots like ended up fighting uh, when we saw in the flashback last episode. The fact that our family, that the Robinsons, are, have already locked onto it and are going to visit it presumably next episode makes me convinced they're all dead. <laughs> or yeah, mostly dead. Rude, they're, yeah. Well, probably evacuated to be fair. Maybe evacuated, yeah. But um, I, I, I can already see the episode of them arriving on the ship, docking and like going through it in the dark and it's, it's been, there's it's been just, a bloodbath. It's just empty, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of Bushwhack from Firefly or I'm thinking of... Pretty much. Yeah. I'm expecting that as well, because I know I, I I kind of fought you on it a little bit last time, but uh, after seeing this, I'm like, and then, you know, and then finding it as easily as they did at the end of this episode, yeah, yeah, it ain't it ain't going that easily. They'll probably find a survivor who's like got a few words in them before they die. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, probably the it, usual. It was the robots. The robots killed us, Maureen. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they know who she is. <laughs> Brand new survivor. <laughs> Joe, you know, did it occur to me till just now, but Maureen's a really Scottish name, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a really Scottish name, and it wasn't until I was doing... Because, I, I mean, obviously to everyone else, it sounds like I've got a really strong accent, but in terms of Scottish people, I don't. He uh, really doesn't. No. But when I'm doing a voice like that, I kind of... I, 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 not intentionally, but I just sort of naturally go more Scottish, because if I'm doing a sort of character, it tends to get stronger. And I just, as I said Maureen there, I'm like, well, that's really Scottish. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, dear. Anyway, so, 
Um, so yeah, that's that's what they're on their way to. Um, so yeah, it was fun adventure for 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 an episode. Uh, a couple of character beats that were nice. E- even uh, Judy got upset that she was wasn't you know been allowed to do certain things. Uh, John was kind of saying, "No, don't do this." And his argument, like even though he's probably still being concerned, Dad, uh, that's probably playing a part in it. He does actually have a pretty good excuse for not letting her do the dangerous stuff. It's like, hey, you're the doctor. If anything happens to you, the rest of us may be screwed. So yeah, I'm kind of on his side here, and I felt like she almost made it worse as well when she went back in, and he'd mm. already, you know, he'd got it fixed, and he was like, "Quick, get out before you know we get flooded." She was just right, an extra person to get up the ladder, uh, you know, before he could get out. Then at that point, and I was kind of waiting for maybe you know a, a tenser moment there yeah this is exactly the sort of job that uh that, that penny could be doing. if she wasn't the one trapped down down the bottom like she, she's there to help with these sort yeah. of situations help because removal. because she's uh more expendable, expendable. <laughs> <laughs> so she can... and i say that i actually like her the more she's my favorite character but but, she... but in terms of raw skill set yeah exactly uh of course the other big deal that we have to mention is that smith did steal some of the poisonous seaweed and Do you know what? Kept i don't, it I don't think we actually got to the point that you were talking about with the oh. diary uh the, you know with the book that uh after you know the, the you know, maureen's not read it um and then we get back up and and, and smith has oh and sure yeah, yeah. And, and, and she kind of and, and penny does the same thing that she did with the mother of you know all right yes yeah, if you did you know prove it tell me oh, your favorite bit and and she starts in the oh I, I can't quite remember you know and then and, and you and she obviously thinks it's the same and then she pulls out you know a, a line exact quote and it's oh even she read it but but her mother didn't yeah I, I think I do like the fact that she did kind of patch things up with her mother for, before this scene though as opposed is because it'd be one thing if it was just like no her mother's constantly letting her down and Smith is constantly being the 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 person who's paying attention to her that that's at least made it a bit more intricate i guess that her mother isn't just completely failing miserably uh sure. alongside it um they're going for a longer play here that's not super obvious because yeah, this is the thing everyone else like there's a moment earlier on where judy's like you know op- op- you know operating on dawn it's before the blood transfusion it's just you know uh smith's just sort of hanging around because she's got nowhere else to go and judy gives her a job i think it's like to clean up the vomit or something like that <laughs> and mm-hmm. Smith says, ah, oh, like, your says I shouldn't touch anything. He's like, just do your chores and shut up. And, like, everyone has that attitude with her, except Penny right now. Like, everyone's very much, I'm not even going to listen to your bullshit. Because cause she tries to, like, say, oh, I mean, you know, it's, it, oh, it must be nice to f- actually feel like you've got power. She's, 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 again, she's trying to turn Judy against everyone. It's like, to make her feel like she's never trusted uh, yeah. by her parents. And Judy just shuts it down immediately. Like, no, shut up and do your chores. Yeah. <laughs> And obviously, it did get in her head a little bit because that's kind of what mm. sparks, you know, the, the conversation with the dad later. But I think he's pretty fair of, you know, at the end, what he says to her, it's like, no, ju- you know, just because you're out doesn't mean you have to do everything. You got to learn that, you know, you can do other things instead. Yeah. So I- I'm liking how everyone's treating her. It's a really different status quo from last season. We were obviously didn't find out until towards the end, which it was like. So yeah. uh, that makes for a neat change. We should um, uh, mention as well. She was sneaking about in the in the cockpit with the the computer. She uh, was. She was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Will kind of came in and caught her in the act almost. Um, oh, but I, it it distracted her a little bit. I'm I'm going to take it on bridge with the show here and say that's more of a bridge than a cockpit. But I mean that's not here, not there. <laughs> really, you go in there. Oh, it's, it's a big it's a, it's a big bridge. There's like multiple seats. Uh, this was. I'd have to look at it again, but you might be, you might be right on this one. Yeah, uh, more of a I'd bridge to, than a cockpit. But I mean, this... I'd have to look at it. But I'll, I'll reserve judgment. Um, but my point was, she was messing with the you know the main computer screen bit, mm. and um, you know it's it's presumably at this point to do with one of two things. I would say either a third thing we can't predict, or um, something to do with the the spike that the the alien engine had, or mm-hmm. something to do with how easily they found you know the main ship. Like I don't know if it's feeding them false data or something. Because, you know, the way they do it is it's tracking, a, you know, a, a, a sonic signature. Did she kind of, you know, plant a false trail, maybe? I don't know why. Yeah, where would she want to go that she'd want to lure them to? I don't know. I don't know why yet, but I, it's the only things I can think of that she was doing, unless you've got any other ideas. I don't really. I, I do suspect she was up to something, but yeah. I don't I don't necessarily have a feeling as to what it was. Um, 
I get I'll because I part of me just gets the impression that she's constantly wanting to be completely aware of everything, so she has her options to be conniving. Mm-hmm. It's not so much That's that she that. even it's not so much that even she always has a conniving plan, but she wants to know if she can have one. <laughs> so she's looking at you know the possibilities of what they're doing next or what the situation is or or whatever. No, now, it's possible. Not that I'm saying she didn't do something because she probably did, but. Uh, it it could have been information gathering. You're right. You, you, yeah. yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. I think that we're supposed to be kind of on edge with her. Like, you know, every time we see her somewhere, is she up to something? So she may not always necessarily be at one hundred percent of the time, even though she often is. Yeah, that's true. I think this one sticks out because she actively hides when Will comes in, um, and she, you know, like she's clearly not supposed to be doing this. Yeah, yeah. And even yeah, even Will's like not listening to her. He's you know, because she tries to say, yeah. "Oh, I mean, the ro- me, me, and you were the same because we both bonded with the robot." Yeah. And he's like, "Don't you, you try to make it your bodyguard?" She's like, "That's still a bond." <laughs> yeah. So, and Will really wants to find the robot. Um, oh, oh, and you know, he's still a kid, so it made sense when he was still kind of saying we should stay and analyze the uh, the because they find like like uh, the robot writing on the the, glyph. uh, yeah, the glyphs on the on the floor of the, this trench, and rightly everyone else is like no 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 we have to get off the planet or we're going to die and starve so we have to leave <laughs> like, we're not... we, we can come back later uh but they do get a photo of it and penny passes it on hmm. so i don't i don't believe he's managed to translate it yet i don't recall that being a thing in season one no i don't think so but um presumably there'll be more leads to the robot uh on the on the other ship i would have thought so yeah because they were there before of course uh, the robots that is yeah. um so no it makes sense but yeah that was pretty much it. it was it was a fine second episode i thought uh it was a little bit tighter it was a shorter it was like 39 minutes as opposed to yeah, yeah. the 50 odd of the first one um i do like kind of like these first two act kind of as a pair which is noble because i think last season also started with a very similar like, it was like two or three episodes of them landing on the planet and surviving in the air before they met the other before they colonists met with everyone else yeah. i think it was about four episodes wasn't it yeah so uh, I'm cool with that, and I think because we're going to this other ship, I can almost see that being an episode or two, and then we'll be on it. Uh, you know. d- d- completely depends on the scenario, but you could be right. Yeah, uh, and I'm kind of liking that. You know, if, if we have like you know four or five kind of key situations that we're going through in the season, I think that'll sort of pace it quite nicely. I agree, and it really shakes it up nicely from last season where it was just the one planet. Yeah, because after that first little batch in the ice, once they met up with everyone else, it was really just the one thing for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think they did a good job of varying the planet itself because, you know, it had all these different conditions. Oh, yeah, because we had that great scene where they were going across the... Uh, it was like the little eruptions, the little... Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah. Um, they, they had all sorts of natural disasters to contend with on that planet, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's nice to have some variety. Yeah, so we'll get creepy ghost ship next episode, hopefully. So. Yeah. Uh, also, just complete side note, Don, Navy SEAL. There was a reference in this episode to it. And I was like, oh, so he was Navy. That would, you, you know what, you, you'd be making a great point right now if you'd said John and not Don. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> this is why I hate similar sounding names. This this is why most media does not do that. <laughs> yeah, someone confirmed it in the comments as well, actually, in the first oh, episode. Well, I didn't but, see that. <laughs> um, but yes, they referenced the fact that he's a Navy SEAL in this episode. Uh, yes, Don, on the other hand, not so much. No, he's a, he's a scoundrel and a scumbag. Probably. Yeah, with a heart of gold, though. With a heart of gold, though. All right. Well, there you go. That is episode two of Lost Space. We'll be back with episode three in the near future. Let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates. If you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here, you can head over to patreon.com slash TV and give us a one dollar per month or more and that will help keep everything coming and you get some bonuses for your troubles and you can go do that uh, otherwise you know rate the podcast and apple podcast uh, five stars helps people find us and some other stuff like that so go, go and have a look share us out on the social medias all that usual sort of shena- shenanigans uh, but otherwise that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla